Hello folks, my name is Noel V. Ginnity. I'm the world's cleanest Irish comedian and I'm sitting here on the edge of my town of Kells in the county of Mead and I'm sitting on the very famous Celtic, historic Celtic cross that was erected in 1893, not very far from here. And uh, I hope you enjoy the few stories I'm going to tell you because some of them are actually older than this Celtic cross. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Dublin's traditional Irish dancers, a fantastic troupe of dancers, and they were dancing in the county of Meath. That's the place I was born and reared. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take you over to a very, very big hotel in Dublin where my show has been running for the past 30 years. I came in here first with long hair, then short hair, now no hair. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember Elvis Presley when he was alive the first time. <laughs> but I tell you, you know you're getting old these days when you wake up one morning and your toes outnumber your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're getting old when you watch Crime Watch instead of Baywatch. <laughs> And you definitely know you're getting old when you wake up one morning and you have a 50-year-old bald-headed son. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're getting old when your family start talking about you in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and then as you get older, you know the difference between a house and a home. A home is where they're going to put you when they get you out of the house. <laughs> and my wife gave up sex for Lent. I didn't hear about it till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're getting old when you go out on a Saturday night to paint the town red and you're back home in bed before the paint is dry. <laughs> Casey said to Murphy, Casey said to Murphy, he says, what do you know about euthanasia? Murphy says, they're just as bad as the youth in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> euthanasia, man. <laughs> Casey said to Murphy, what's the difference between in-laws and outlaws? And Murphy says, well, outlaws are wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and did you ever notice, ladies and gentlemen, did you ever notice why is it that people who snore always get to sleep first? <laughs> and 
why is it why is it when there's a knock at your door why does the dog always think it's for him <laughs> <laughs> and Casey and Murphy <laughs> this is the best of stuff this is isn't it <laughs> Casey and Murphy were going off to Italy for a bit of a vacation and when they arrive at the airport they discover that they're now on different flights and this causes a huge problem because they don't know where they're going to meet up when they arrive in Italy and Murphy is shouting over at Casey where will I see you? Casey says I'll meet you in Rome <laughs> and Murphy says whereabouts in Rome? Casey says I'll see you in the Vatican and Murphy says, will you be in the bar or the lounge? <laughs> <laughs> but he thought he'd like to go to Spain on his holidays, Murphy. He thought he'd like to go to Spain for a bit of a vacation. And he's discussing it with Casey. He says, I'd love to go to Spain on my holidays, he said, but he said, I can't speak the language. He says, so I feel I can't go. And Casey says to him, you'll have no trouble in Spain with the language, he says, as long as you speak slowly. He says, just speak slowly, he says, you won't have any problem. So he went to Spain on his holidays, and he's in the bar the first evening. And he said to the barman, he says, could I have a pint of Guinness, please? and a glass of red wine. <laughs> and the barman says, you want a pint of Guinness and a glass of red wine <laughs> Murphy says yes please so he gets to drink and then he gets to thinking and he said to the bomb and he says where are you from <laughs> the bomb and says I'm from Ireland <laughs> And Murphy says, why are we speaking Spanish? <laughs> hey! That's a cracker, mister. That's a cracker, isn't it? Here. <laughs> yeah. Casey and Murphy, ladies and gentlemen. Casey and Murphy were walking along the other day, and Casey says to Murphy, isn't it a lovely day? Murphy says, it is a lovely day. He says, if I was working, he says, I'd take the day off. <laughs> <laughs> so they were out looking for jobs. They weren't looking too hard. And they went down to a construction site. Murphy said to the foreman, I'm looking for a job. The foreman says, I haven't enough work for my own men. When Murphy says, you can start me, he says, because I won't be doing much. <laughs> And the foreman said to Murphy, he said, there's a man here today didn't come in. <laughs> he said, there's a man here today didn't come in. And he says, if he doesn't come in tomorrow, I'll send him home and you can have his job. <laughs> So Murphy's going home and he's passing by the river Liffey and there's a young fella drowning. Murphy jumped in and saved him. He said to the young fella, how'd you come to fall in? The young fella says, I didn't come to fall in. He says, I came to fish and I fell in. <laughs> he says, what's your name and I'll tell your mother. He says, my mother knows me name. <laughs> So 
So Murphy's at home watching television with his wife. He's watching a new Irish television programme called Looking Back. It starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 7.30. <laughs> And he's just sitting there watching the television. There's a knock at the door. It's a policeman. And the policeman said to Murphy, he says, when you were coming home this evening, he said, did you save a young fellow from drowning? Murphy says, I did, sir. Well, the policeman says, I have bad news for you. He says, he's after hanging himself from a tree. <laughs> Murphy says, no, he didn't. He says, I put him up there to dry. <laughs> And Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy could never understand how his sister had three brothers and he had only two. <laughs> only about 57 people got that, you know that, Mrs. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I'm pleased you're laughing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased you're laughing, missus. And I don't take your laughter for granted. I, I, I really appreciate you laughing because, you see, from here, I know it's quite difficult for you to laugh when you're maybe starting dinner, finishing dinner, having desserts, having Irish coffees. It is difficult for you to laugh. And I appreciate you making the effort. <laughs> no, because you could maybe have a mouthful of meat and peas. <laughs> and you're sitting opposite someone. You. <laughs> So I thank you sincerely for that. Because you see, the comedian always gets a hard time because people are shouting up at him, we heard it before and that's only nonsense and that's too childish and I couldn't laugh at that and tell us something new. But I never ever hear you shouting up at the singers. <laughs> you never shout up at the singers, I don't sing that old Danny boy, we heard it before. <laughs> And they never shout up at Pavarotti, missus. They never shout up at Pavarotti. Sing something else, Mr. Pavarotti. They never do that. I went to see Pavarotti here in Dublin about two weeks ago. And I'll tell you something for nothing. He hates it when you join in. <laughs> And Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy went to the doctor. He said to the doctor, he says, every time I touch me, he here, he says, I get a terrible pain. He says, every time I touch me, he here, I get a terrible pain. He says, every time I touch me, he here, I get a terrible pain. And the doctor said to Murphy, take your shirt off. <laughs> Murphy took his shirt off. The doctor says, now, when I touch you here, have you any pain? He says, no. He says, when I touch you here, have you any pain? He says, no. He says, when I touch you here, have you any pain? He says, no. The doctor says, I know what's wrong with you. He says, you broke your finger. <laughs> this stuff is getting worse. <laughs> Suppose you all came here by plane. Did you all fly to Ireland? Yes? Yeah? See, I can't fly any place. I have to go by boat all the time. No, but I hate that flying. See, if I go by boat, you see, if you go by boat and something happens, I can, I can swim a few yards. But if anything happens to plane, I can't fly an inch. <laughs> <laughs> and the security then, that's good, the security at the airport, I know it has to be done, but they do ask you some stupid questions, don't they? <laughs> Did you pack your own bag? <laughs> No, the woman next door come in and she does it for me. <laughs> and has this bag been out of your sight? <laughs> been under the bed for two years. <laughs> <laughs> and Murphy, Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy was going through the airport and he had a parcel. And uh, the security man says, what's that? Murphy says, it's a sandwich. The security man says, that's ticking. He says, no, it's turkey. <laughs> <laughs> he says, it's ticking, Mrs. Ticking, you know. <laughs> so 
Some of this stuff is difficult, I'll give you that. It, it comes on the higher education in this country. <laughs> This is, the, this is the most laid-back country in the world. We're so laid-back here, we take Valium as a stimulant. <laughs> <laughs> and Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy, he won three million in the Irish lottery. Three million, missus, in the Irish lottery. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote to his pen pal in Australia and told him that he was after coming in for some money and he'd like him to come visit with him in Ireland. And his pen pal wrote back and he says, Paddy, I won't be going any place. And he says, I must tell you, he says, I, I, I'm not like other men, he says. So he says, I'll explain to you, he says, I'm 10 foot 2 tall, he says. My arms are 8 foot long and the swing behind me at the back. <laughs> he says, I have one eye and it's in the middle of me forehead. <laughs> and Murphy wrote back to me, he says, it doesn't matter what he says, I'm sending you your money and I'm sending you the tickets and I want you to come visit me in Ireland. And he put a PS on it. He says, please enclose a photograph so I recognise you at the airport. <laughs> and Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy went to the pub one night and never came back. He just vanished. And after about six years, his wife thought she'd better report him missing. So she collected up some of the younger children and she headed off down for the police station. And she said to the policeman, she said, I'd like to report my husband missing. And the policeman says, could you give us a description of this man? Well, she says he's six foot six. Blonde, blue eyed, long blonde hair, 56 inch chest, big biceps. She says, an enormous, handsome man. <laughs> and one of the children is tugging at her skirt he says, Mammy, he said, that doesn't sound like Daddy. <laughs> she says, I know, but who wants him back? <laughs> well, isn't it strange, ladies and gentlemen, as, as we get older, we start doing strange things and different things, don't we? Like, for instance, when you're, when you're leaving your own house at night now, when you're going out, you, you leave the lights on, the TV on, and the radio on, so you won't be burgled when you're out, missus. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Just nod your head if you understand. <laughs> no, when, you're go when you're going out at night, missus, you leave the lights on, the TV on, the radio on, so you won't be burgled when you're out. <laughs> I was going out last Tuesday night, I did that. I left the lights on, the TV on, the radio on. I pinned the note to the door saying, I'm inside. <laughs> <laughs> and when I come home, I was still robbed. <laughs> and the burglar left a note for me. He says, I searched every place for you. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. and Mrs. Murphy were asleep in bed in their own house, in their own bed. And that surprised Murphy. <laughs> and the teeth broke in, the teeth. See, uh, we have problems in Ireland with the, with the TH's. A, t a teeth, it's not, I know it's not a teeth. A teeth. I'll stand well back so I don't spit on anybody. And I'll see, can I get this right? All right? I know laughing, I know, yeah. <laughs> A thief broke in. <laughs> See, when I think about it, I can do it, you know. So this thief broke in. <laughs> he broke into the bedroom, he had a gun. He put the gun to Mrs. Murphy's head, he says, put your hands up. She says, I can't, the gun is in the way. <laughs> he says, well, what's your name? She says, Elizabeth Murphy. Well, he says, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, he said, you're hardly going to believe this, Elizabeth. But this is your lucky day, Elizabeth. He said, my own mother's name is Elizabeth, he says. And today is her birthday. And because of that, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, he says, I am not going to harm you. He said to Murphy, what's your name? <laughs> He says, Paddy Murphy, but all my friends call me Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs>
And that's enough laughter, ladies and gentlemen. I have to give you a little break from that or you'll split your sides laughing at this nonsense. So I'd like to reintroduce, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dublin's traditional Irish dancers. I only spent one day in this school. You were a one day wonder. One day wonder, only yeah. One oh, day. I only, that's what they say, I only needed one day. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. So now it's a much bigger school now with 82 children here. So. Only about 20 kids when I was here, that's it, at most. Why yeah. did you only come here for a day? Because, <laughs> I'll tell you this the story, and this is the fact. Yeah. I came here to school and I had a big long pencil. And when I got to school, the teacher cut it up and gave a lot of the children pieces of my pencil. pencil. And I went back home with a piece of pencil I could put behind my ear. And I didn't think that was fair. Now, I was all of four years of age. I, know, I, know. I didn't think it was fair that my pencil should have been... So you headed into cans. And the next day, I wouldn't come back here. I went oh. into, 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 town, into the town of Carroll. That's a lovely story. Well, I, I learned a lesson because I knew there was rich and poor kids. I really believed that if I was a rich kid, my pencil might not have been cut up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this bell was here and called me in from playing on my one day in this very lovely school. <laughs> have you any funny stories? Yeah. Do you have a funny story? What do you call a girl with two toilets on her head? What do you call a girl with two toilets on her head? What do you call a girl with two toilets on her head? Lulu. <laughs> That's right. How you doing, man? How you doing? What's your name? Alan. Alan. 
He has, this fella has a job. He's the first male comedian in his hometown. Why, why did the bubble gum cross the road? Why did the bubble gum cross the road? Why? Because he was stuck to a chicken's leg. <laughs> because he was stuck to a chicken's leg. <laughs> I think that's the best one. What's the joke? Why, why, why does the chicken cross the road? Why did the chicken cross the road? Because he was stuck to the car. He was what? Stuck to the car. He was... He was... Stuck to the car. He was stuck to the car. Why did the chicken cross the road? To record with the chieftains. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> It's amazing when you buy something from the catalogue, it never looks the same when you get it home. <laughs> this was supposed to be a lawnmower. <laughs> a little Murphy, little Murphy says to his granddad, he says, Granddad, granddad, he says, would you do your frog impression? And the grandfather says, what do you mean me frog impression? And the little villa says, and me grandma says, when you croakers were all going to Disneyland. <laughs> and did you ever stop to think, when you buy a cured ham, what did it have? <laughs> And do the people in Glockamora wonder how things are doing here? <laughs> and do one-legged people lose all their socks in the wash? <laughs> this girl went to the dentist. She's just sitting in the chair. She says, my God, she'd rather have a baby than have me teeth out. Well, see, make your mind up before I tilt the chair. <laughs> There's two cows, two cows stand in the field. One cow said to the other, what do you think of this mad cow disease? I oh, said, it doesn't bother me. He says, I'm a duck. <laughs> <laughs> a duck, Mrs. A duck, a duck. <laughs> this Irish fella, this Irish fella got a final demand notice from the taxman, from the dreaded taxman. He got a big demand written on it was final notice. He says, thanks be to God, that's the last I'll hear of that. <laughs> I just read in the Irish paper there, I just read in the Irish paper where Seamus O'Toole, the Irish Olympic swimmer, is after swimming the English Channel in five hours, 53 minutes. And he came back in three minutes, 22 seconds. <laughs> His jockstrap was caught on the pier. <laughs> this is magnificent, isn't it? Magnificent, Mrs. Isn't it? Magnificent. <laughs> Here, Mrs. Casey, Mrs. Casey said to Mrs. Murphy, she says, what's the difference, she says, between kinky and erotica? <laughs> kinky and erotica. And Mrs. Murphy thought for a few minutes, she says, I'll explain it to you this way. Now, she says, if Paddy tickles you with a feather, she said, that's erotica. And if he uses the whole chicken, that's kinky. <laughs> And Mrs. K Mrs. Casey said to Mrs. Murphy, she says, Mary, she says, what do you know about the erogenous zone? <laughs> and Mrs. Murphy says, I know you can't park there after six o'clock. <laughs> she 
She says to her, how is your libido? Oh, she says, I'm trading it in for a Toyota, she says. <laughs> and this old man, this old man went to the doctor. The doctor says, what's the matter with you? The old man says, I can't pee. <laughs> the doctor says, what age are you? He says, I'm 97. I said, you peed enough. <laughs> <laughs> we had our first test tube baby here in Ireland last week. He was born in a bottle of Guinness. <laughs> he had a very slender body, but he had a lovely head on him. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy went into the pub and he says, he says I, I want uh, ten beers, six vodkas, five gins, three brandies and fourteen Irish whiskies. He was on his own. The barman lined him up and Murphy says, he says, you know, he says, I shouldn't be having this with what I have. And the doctor says, or the barman says, what have you? He says, 50 cents. <laughs> he says, I shouldn't be having this with what I have, miss. You understand? And he says, what have you? He says, 50 cents. So some of this stuff is difficult, eh? And did you see in the paper, ladies and gentlemen, did you see in the paper where the woman in Italy of 67 years of age had a baby? Did you see that? Yeah. Did you see that, missus? Yeah. Well, everybody else seen it. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> in Italy, missus. Did you see it? In Italy. In Italy, missus, where the Pope lives. In Italy. Woman of 67 had a baby, and her daughter of 42 called her up on the phone. She says, Mammy, she says, I want to come round and see the new baby. And the mother says, Well, you just have to wait until he cries because I put him down and I forget where I left him. <laughs> <laughs> this is magnificent, isn't it, Mrs? <laughs> and Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy went into a bar one evening and he's just sitting up at the counter. And in Murphy's opinion, the most beautiful girl in the world is sitting up to his left-hand side. Now, he spent a great part of his evening trying to move his drink up so he got a bit closer to her. <laughs> And you know how it is, like if, if you're a woman and you see a handsome man and if you're a man and you see a beautiful woman, it shows on your face with a pleasant expression. Like if a woman sees a handsome man, it, she's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> and if a man sees a beautiful woman, it's more like, oh, yeah, boy, yeah. <laughs> Well, Murphy has gone past that, ladies and gentlemen. Murphy is now leering at this girl. He's leering, missus. Now, I don't know where you people come from, but here in Ireland, if you were caught leering in the workplace or any place as a lady or, or your work person, you could lose your job and maybe go to jail for leering, missus. And a lot of people don't even know what a leer is, and I'll try and demonstrate what a leer is to you. A leer is when your eyes are half closed, mouth half open, and you're in a near coma. <laughs> now, the same expression might cross your face if you were doing your pee-pee in the swimming pool. <laughs> Now that's a leer. <laughs> well, you'll hardly believe what happened next. <laughs> but this most beautiful of girls, didn't she sneeze? <laughs> and her glass eye flew out. 
And Murphy was just within eye shot and he caught him. <laughs> well, this moment is made for Murphy because he has to deliver this precious item back to this most beautiful of girls. And he's in a kind of a... <laughs> kind of a, a balletic movement. <laughs> That's a pas de deux. <laughs> you heard of a front door and a back door, this is a pas de deux. <laughs> Mrs. I think I'm stuck. <laughs> well, he glided up to her. He glided, glided, he glided, glided. He glided, he, he glided up to her. <laughs> and he gave her the eye. <laughs> And it gets worse. <laughs> he glitted back again. And she says, I'm so embarrassed. She says, I've never been so embarrassed in my life. He says, don't worry about it. He says, you're beautiful, he says. <laughs> he says, you're a beautiful woman. Forget about it. You're wonderful. She, she says, could I buy you a drink? He says, in between dribbling and drooling and leering. He says, he'd love to have a drink with her. So they had a few drinks. And then she said to him, then she said to him, would you like to have dinner with me? Now, I must stress, Mrs., because they were in for a few drinks early after work, you understand? <laughs> I don't want you to get the impression that they're going to some dive restaurant or a fast food place at one or two in the morning. It's now only eight o'clock in the evening. And this, the rest of this story, ladies and gentlemen, the rest of this story will tell you about the new modern Ireland. This is a new, vibrant, modern Ireland you're visiting now. And this is a different Ireland than if you had visited a few years ago. For good or bad, it is a new, and as I said, modern, vibrant Ireland. Because we've gone terribly wealthy here now for some reason. We have more money beyond the wildest dreams of Donald Trump. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the houses are expensive and the cars are big. You see, I saw the two sides here. I saw the two sides in this country when we were getting food passes and clothes passes back from America. Army and Navy surplus clothes back from America. I can tell you it was no fun for me going to school dressed as a Japanese general. <laughs> And see, this is the new modern Ireland, ladies and gentlemen. No longer is a piece of meat and two veg. That's no good anymore. Where did they go to eat? A French restaurant. A French restaurant. What did you think I said there, missus? <laughs> a French restaurant. And a, a French restaurant, madame. And I had a wonderful meal, and she had frog's legs and chicken breasts, but apart from that, she had a lovely personality. <laughs> and he had a croissant. <laughs> How do you say it in America? Croissant. One voice. Croissant. A croissant. Well, you see, that'd be no good in the new modern Ireland. You have to say it the proper French way, halfway up your nose, you understand? <laughs> a croissant. <laughs> and no longer is a cup of tea and a slice of brown bread and butter that's no good now for Paddy the Irishman oh no we have to have a mocha <laughs> a latte <laughs> or a crappuccino <laughs> with your croissant madame a few years ago, you could only get tea in this country. Now it has to be a mocha, a latte, or 
a crappuccino. <laughs> or maybe a skinny. A skinny. You never heard of a skinny, Mrs. A skinny crappuccino. Oh, that's the whole go now for the dieters, a skinny. <laughs> See, this is the new modern Ireland, and if you visit Dublin and you're looking around the sites, it, it's all changed. We, for some reason now, we think we're living in San Francisco or maybe the south of Spain or someplace where it's nice and warm or someplace in Australia. So we no longer can eat inside. <laughs> for some reason now, we have to sit on the street. <laughs> Unfortunately, in Ireland, it's mostly Gale Force 47 <laughs> in the lashings of rain. <laughs> and our government, ladies and gentlemen, our government thought it would be better for our health if we stopped smoking inside. <laughs> so... <laughs> Here's a woman who's ahead of me. <laughs> so we're now out on the street Gale Force 47, lashings of rain, smoking, <laughs> and taking in all the fumes of the cars as they go by. Wah, wah. <laughs> we can't kill ourselves half quick enough. <laughs> and a few years ago, ladies and gentlemen, this is the best of all, you see, a few years ago here in dear old Ireland, if you saw tables and chairs outside a pub or a restaurant, that was an eviction. <laughs> <laughs> We were being thrown out for not paying the rent. But now is to have a crappuccino. <laughs> I'm amazed. Listen, I, I have a spot of bother I have to tell you now, and I must hurry because, really, <laughs> my story finished down there when he gave her the eye. <laughs> So does anybody know what happened next? <laughs> could, we, could we get some kind of an ending for this, Mrs., so I could get off? Huh? What'll we try, Mrs.? Do you know anything? Shit. <sighs> See, I got too smart there. I shouldn't have gone into all that about the crappuccinos. And, uh, what happened now? You're a young man. What happened? No, you don't know. No. Well, she says good. Now, this is good. <laughs> She, <laughs> this is great, this is good. Now, she says to him, what'd she say? <laughs> she says to him, <laughs> would you like some more beans? <laughs> no, she, she says to him, Would you like to go back to my place for a mocha? <laughs> and he said, I'd prefer a skinny, he said. <laughs> so he went back, and he had uh, two skinnies and a croissant. <laughs> what happened now, Mrs., do you know? <laughs> she, she says to him, he hasn't opened his mouth all night. <laughs> this is good now, this is good. I bet you liked it. She... Do you know what's happening here, Mrs.? Do you know the... <laughs> she says to him, what would you like for your breakfast? <laughs> that was good now. We got through the whole night there, Mrs. He says, I'd like... He says, I'd like a croissant, he says, and a, 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 a crappuccino, he says. And then, and then he said, he said, uh, he says, uh, oh, yeah. He says, you look beautiful. This was the morning. <laughs> and she did look beautiful. And her hair was in a bun, and her nose was in a cheese sandwich. <laughs> Did you get that, Mrs? Her hair was in a bun and her nose was in a cheese <laughs> He says, 
He said, uh, <laughs> he said, uh, what did he say, Mrs.? He said, I have, I have something to say, he said. <laughs> well, she said, say it. He says, I, uh, he said, uh, He said, I want to... Uh, <laughs> she, uh, he says, uh, she says, I know what you want to say. You want to tell me you're going to leave me. And she started to cry. And a tear came to her eye. <laughs> <laughs> he says, no, no, no. He says it three times. He says, no. He said, but I'm worried, he says, I'm worried, he says. He says, I'm worried, he says, at night, he says, when you get all dressed up and looking so gorgeous and so beautiful, and you go to these bars, and he says, all these dirty, vile, vulgar men are grazing upon you, gazing upon you. <laughs> he says, I'm just worried, he says, do you pick up men like this every night? She said, I do not. She said, you just happened to catch me eye. People looking up at me here tonight, bewildered. <laughs> she don't worry about it. It's, it's only jokes, Mrs. You understand? There's some people waiting for some profound message. Nothing. This is nonsense. <laughs> I swear to God, there's people looking up at me with faces on them. You think I was after asking them for a kidney? <laughs> I'm a kidney of any of you. I just want you to enjoy yourselves. Your money's half spent. It's too late to go any place else. And there's people enjoy themselves, but <laughs> when they laugh, they never make any sound. <laughs> That's laughing in, missus. And if you laugh in, it causes gas. <laughs> so you want to enjoy yourself. Get out there. Yeah. That was good, wasn't it? That was a good bit of fun. Here. Did you ever notice this, legend? <laughs> Did you ever notice this if you go to a big 
football game or the races and there's a, a huge crowd of people and maybe they brought in extra restrooms and maybe maybe 40 restrooms and this is what happened to me missus you see you never use the first one or you never use the last one now I don't know why that is missus but this is what happened to me missus wouldn't use the first one wouldn't use the last one see that deathly silence like a bad wedding he's all right there <laughs> Wouldn't use the first one, missus. This is what happened to me. You wouldn't use the last one. Made me way down to about the middle, you see. <laughs> and in I go and sat down as one would. <laughs> now somebody else comes in. <laughs> no, not in on top of me, just in like, you know. <laughs> and where do they sit? Next door to me. <laughs> then I heard the voice saying, how are you doing? I says, very good, thank you. <laughs> he says, how are the children? <laughs> oh, I says, very good. <laughs> he says, how is your wife? <laughs> I says, she's fantastic. <laughs> he said, did you change your car yet? Oh, I says, listen, I haven't enough money to change me car. And with that, a head came over the top and says, would you ever shut your mouth? I'm on the mobile phone. <laughs> the, mo the mobile phone, ladies and gentlemen, that's something else. Here in Ireland, we're now a slave to the mobile phone. 96% of, of the population have mobile phones. 96%. Out of every 100 people, 96% of them have a mobile phone. It's, it's crazy. They're using them now to speak to each other from across the street. <laughs> Are you going into the pub? No, I'm coming out. Oh, I thought you were going in. <laughs> And they're using them to speak to each other from table to table in restaurants. Uh, did you enjoy the scampi? Oh yes, I love all Walt Disney's movies. <laughs> <laughs> and here, they buried a fellow in my town last week with his mobile phone. They buried a missus with his mobile phone. And just as they're putting him down on the ground, I could hear his phone started to ring. I could hear him saying, I'm breaking up, I'm breaking up, I'm breaking up. <laughs> and I have to tell you this. This only happened to me on Saturday now in the supermarket. I have to get this right now. I'm at the checkout, and there's a man, and then there's a woman with a little boy, and there's me. And his phone, his mobile phone, started to beep. Beep, 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 beep. And the little boy tugged at his mammy's skirt. He says, Mammy, be careful, I think he's backing up. <laughs> Well, that's the truth. That's not a story, missus. That happened to me just last week. Here, little Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, little Murphy, little Murphy, says to his daddy, he said, Daddy, he said, did I go with you on your honeymoon? And the father said, well, you went with me, but you came home with your mother. <laughs> Now that was Murphy's youngest son. And Murphy's eldest son, he was about 18 years of age and he was going out into the world to make his fortune. And he said to his father, he said, Daddy, he said, how would I know if a man is gay? And Murphy says, kiss him. <laughs> he says, if he closes his eyes, he is, and if he closes yours, he's not. <laughs> And here in Ireland, ladies and gentlemen, here in Ireland, we were getting a full cargo load, a full shipload of Viagra from America. And didn't the ship sink off the coast of Greenland? And an hour later, the Titanic came up. <laughs> Oh, dear. 
Oh, God. Oh, you're wonderful. But this is magnificent, isn't it? It's a magnificent evening, isn't it? Magnificent, isn't it? Oh, dear God. I thought somebody else came on. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy is in the bar and Casey having a drink. And Casey said to Murphy, he said, I had, a, I had a fantastic dream last night. He said, I had the best dream I ever had in my life, he says. He says, I dreamt, he said, that Tiger Woods called round to my place, invited me out for a game of golf. I went out, played 18 holes with him and beat him. <laughs> That's a little joke by itself, you know. <laughs> and Murphy says, Murphy says, don't talk to me about dreams. Says, don't mention dreams to me. He says, I had a dream last night. He says, it kept me awake. He says, I dreamt, he said, that Pamela Anderson, he says, and Julie Roberts called round to my place and wanted to spend the night with me. He said, but I couldn't handle the two of them, so I had to send them away. <laughs> and Casey says, why didn't you call me? <laughs> Murphy says, I did, which we're out playing golf for Tiger Woods. And Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy's in the bar. The same Murphy, different bar, right? <laughs> and he's just sitting in the corner. And over his head where he's sitting, there's an enormous bull's head, missus. An enormous bull's head. Or oh, with horns, a bull, missus. <laughs> Murphy said to the barman, he says, I've never seen a bull with a head as big as that in my life. The barman says, that's a very famous bull. He said, that bull actually killed my brother. And Murphy says, was your brother a bullfighter? The barman says, no, he was sitting there having a drink and it fell on his head. <laughs> Did you get that, missus? It fell on his head, you know. <laughs> and Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, Murphy was walking around Dublin the next day, he went into a bar and he, he sat up at the counter and the barman says to him, would you like a drink? He says, I'd love a pint of beer. So we got the pint of beer, the barman says, that will be four euro. And Murphy says, ah, no, no, no. No, he says, I won't be paying, he said. He says, I just came in and sat down, and you asked me, would I like a drink? <laughs> <laughs> so he says, I won't be paying you. So he drank up the drink and he left. And about a month later, he was back in town again. He went into the very same bar, but the barman recognised him straight away. He said, get out that door immediately, out. He says, the last time you were here, he said, you conned me out of a pint of beer. He says, now get out of me, get out, get out before I call the police. Murphy says, I was never next or near the place. The barman says, about a month ago, the same time of the day you were in here, he says, you conned me out of a pint of Guinness. Now get out that door. Murphy says, I was never next or near this place. Well, the barman says, you must have a double then. Well, he says, I'll have a whiskey. <laughs> I met Murphy legend. Now, I met Murphy last week. He looked dreadful. No, a month ago I met him. He looked dreadful. Dreadful, dreadful. He, uh, he looked awful. But I did know he was going through a very bad divorce. And I said, Paddy, I know things are not good in the marriage. And, but I said, whatever is going to happen there will happen, I said. But you'll have to stop worrying, I said. Worry will kill you, I said. I know it's not easy, but I said, worry will be the death of you. So I met him last week. And he looked fantastic. Paddy, I says, I'm delighted to tell you you're looking fantastic. I'd never seen you looking so good in your life. Well, he says, I took your advice, he says. No more worrying, he says. He says, I hired a professional warrior. <laughs> he says, he does all the worrying. He says, I pay him $500 a time. I says, where would you get $500 a time? He says, let him worry about that. <laughs> And here, <laughs> I was going home, <laughs> I was going home the other night and I, you know, and I saw, I came across a very bad car crash and I said to my wife at breakfast, I says, I saw a very bad car crash last night and I says, I'm, I'm going to become a, an organ donor. 
Now, people have, especially American people, have trouble when I say that. How do you pronounce that word in America? Do Let me. One voice. Oh. <laughs> well, it's glad. It's, it's nice to know the way you're thinking. <laughs> no, it's the last word I'm looking for. Donor. 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 And they don't understand me. I said I'd like to become an organ donor. So I sent up the forms and all and sent them away. And I got back my organ donor card. And before Christmas, I was in town, and I ran short of money, and I had some drink taken. And I wanted to get some money out of the ATM machine, the hole in the wall. And I put in the wrong card. <laughs> I put in the organ donor card. And it cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> Oh dear God. Here, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be leaving in about four minutes. I would appreciate when I'm going if you could find it in your hearts to give me a crouching ovation. <laughs> a crouching ovation, Mrs. You know and I know that this act does not deserve a standing ovation, but a crouching ovation. A little rise up off your uh, seat. <laughs> and exercise your franchise. <laughs> And normally I don't ask for applause, it just happens, but I am having a run of bad luck these days, my God. I'll tell you how bad things are. I bought a non-stick frying pan five weeks ago and I can't get the label off it. <laughs> <laughs> and this story I'm going to finish off with, ladies and gentlemen, is about my grandmother. And my grandmother lived to 98. 98. <laughs> and she was world famous on our street. And she was a very small little woman. She was a very small little woman. She was so small, well, you could see her feet in her passport photograph. <laughs> and as she got older, she got smaller. So if you come back to see me in two years, Mrs. I could be gone. <laughs> And my granny wore stockings. Now, there's nothing strange about wearing stockings, but as she got older, she couldn't pull them up very far. So she used to just pull them to her knees and tie two big knots on them. <laughs> it's like she had two kneecaps on each leg, you see? And then tragedy struck, tragedy struck, because the shop in the village where we lived stopped selling stockings and started to sell pantyhose. And my granny started to wear the pantyhose. <laughs> now she used the same system with the pantyhose <laughs> as she did with the stockings. She could only pull them up to here. <laughs> so she had a little hammock swinging in here, you see? <laughs> and she kept the Reader's Digest in it. and a small bit of fresh fruit. <laughs> and whenever on a Sunday you go round to visit Granny, she say, would you like an apple? <laughs> <laughs> and when she was 97, ladies and gentlemen, when she was 97 years of age, she had taken to wearing very strong magnifying glasses. And I remember that because it was around that time he said my brother had to take her into town to buy a pair of shoes. A pair of shoes, Mrs., for her passport photograph. <laughs> and, <laughs> this was an extraordinary excursion because it took us 12 hours to drive five miles with her because she was nervous in the car. And she wouldn't let us drive at any miles per hour. The needle had to be kept at zero. <laughs> 
So we were driving along and there's people walking along, talking in the car window to us. <laughs> and she's sitting there waving out like the Queen of England. <laughs> Only you couldn't see her, just the tips of her fingers. <laughs> Well, we arrive at the shoe shop, ladies and gentlemen. This is an upmarket place. This is an expensive shop with the big heavy mirrors on the wall and the red carpet and the gold gilt chairs dotted round the place. And my granny pulls up one of the chairs, <laughs> sits down, pulls her dress up over her knees. Now, the hammock has no place to swing. <laughs> it's lying dead on the floor. Now, the man who comes to serve her, the man who comes to look after her in the shop, he's as old and as small as herself. And he's totally bald. So he kneels down beside her to start fitting on the shoes. And she's looking through these very, very strong, strong magnifying glasses. And she sees the bald head. <laughs> so she thinks her knee is after coming through her pantyhose. <laughs> so she pulls her dress down over his head. <laughs> well, it's the look of God he didn't light a match to see where he was. <laughs> That's it, folks. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. show I have seen in all of Ireland. The best. We laughed and laughed so much I loved it. Absolutely magnificent. Yeah, great show. What a way to leave Ireland. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that finishes my little tour of my hometown in Ireland. I'm now standing by the Blackwater River, just a mile outside the town of Kelv. Very scenic place. I hope you enjoyed my little offering this evening. I hope I didn't offend anybody. I hope you had a good laugh. And I hope, if you're not Irish, that you come visit us in Ireland, and especially come visit the very historic town of Kells in the county of Mead. God bless you. Good night. Bye-bye.